Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. This is the Omega Seamaster Aquaterra. Last redesigned in 2017, the watch came in several different sizes, dial treatments, and strap and bracelet configurations. This one is 41 millimeters in diameter and stainless steel, 13.5 millimeters thick, and 47.6 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip, with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. We throw it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, and you can see it wears well, comfortably. It's relatively flat for an Omega of the modern generation with a tri-level coaxial, a display case back, and automatic winding. 13 and a half millimeters is about as thin as it gets. It also has a generously sloped conical bezel, so it'll slide underneath the sleeve. Across my wrist, you can see without the end links of a bracelet, it's quite narrow, making this a rare Aquaterra in what's nominally a men's size that's also suitable for a smaller wrist as you could wear this watch on a wrist of 13 and a half centimeters circumference. Again, my wrist is 16. The strap is high grade factory equipment and you can see there's a contrasting stitch. Even though the strap is one piece, there's nothing to bind. It makes for a nice traditional appearance, a little bit of visual warmth and color contrast. We have a cross hatching pattern molded down the center and a little conforming end link insert that better melds the case and the strap end so there's no gap between them. The strap has a buckle that is single fold deployant, twin trigger release. You can see a combination here of polish and satin. The twin triggers ensure it won't pop open accidentally. It's not friction fit. And then the way this works is you actually tuck the strap in, you notch it into each one of these little side pincers, and then all of the excess length hides underneath the strap and there's no need for strap minders. So it winds up being both a very secure clasp and a very clean one when on the wrist. The case designed by now is famous. Liar style lugs. We've known them on Omegas since the early 60s. Inward bevels and outward bevels. We have a mid case that has longitudinal satin. The bevels are polished. The bezel is polished. And if you look carefully, you can see it's slightly inset from the case band to create a visually thinner watch. We have a little bit of countersink for the crown, which is inverse conical that is wider at its outer edge than at its base. It's a screw down crown and the watch is 150 meters water resistant. The dial is described as a sort of chrome effect metallic, and that's exactly what we have right here. It's like ruthenium or, or dark rhodium. If you can imagine the dark rhodium Rolex Yachtmaster, it's that color. Now you can see the teak deck planking, the teak deck concept, as they call it, is designed to evoke the planks of a yacht's deck. Because this is, after all, the Aquaterra, the sea and land. So this is one that you could wear out on your yacht and then also in the ballroom or the dining room of the yacht club. So we have that planking, but we also have a metallic gray tinge and a directional grain. So there's a sunburst across those surfaces. Now the watch has lovely blued applique logo, marquee, and our indices. We'll move the hands so you can better see the dial. And the applique pieces are faceted with a combination of satin and polish. It's subtle, but it's there. And the way the light plays across this dial makes it look a lot more expensive than it actually is. Taking a quick look at the watch in the dark, you'll appreciate that all of the hands on the dial are loomed, so you know whether it's running in the dark. And we have a date down at six o'clock. That's one of the changes that was affected in 2017 when the model generation changed. We got a date at six o'clock instead of three o'clock where it had been previously. You can also see I have a subsidiary setting mode that allows me to set the hour even without changing the location of the minute hand or stopping the watch. Now, if I pull the crown out all the way now, I activate hacking seconds, everything halts, and I can synchronize the watch to a reference time. You can see outboard, there's a little downwardly stepped track for reading the seconds and minutes, and the quarter Arabic numerals 15, 30, 45, and 60 are in blue. Again, 150 meters water resistant and effectively a magnetic. This watch is a Metaz certified master chronometer. Metaz is a chronometer standard developed between Omega and the Swiss Federal Institute of Metrology. And while it uses the ISO 3159 chronometer standards also used by the COSC, it tests the watches in six positions, not five, and fully cased up, not as bare movements. Additional tests on top of chronometry for the master chronometer certification include shock resistant, anti-magnetism, water resistance, winding efficiency, and power reserve. It is the complete 
test of a cased up watch. Now the watch is an automatic winder with a 60 hour power reserve. It has two mainspring barrels, which help to reduce the loss of balance amplitude after, for example, 24 hours. Rolex with the single barrel 3235 loses a lot of amplitude after 24 hours. With the twin barrels in series here, you don't really have that problem. It's a 39 joule movement that beats way at a quirky beat rate of 25,200 vibrations per hour. And that is something you'll find across watch group brands on watches that have anti-magnetic silicon hair springs as here. Look carefully and you can see the bridge for the coaxial escapement just below the balance bridge. There's the secondary bridge, and it is a direct and indirect impulse tangential contact low friction escapement created by George Daniels in 1974, sold by him to Omega and under his supervision industrialized by Omega in 1999. And really with these 8,500 generation movements since 2007, it's been a perfected system improved power reserve, decreased maintenance requirements, and improved chronometry, you get all of them in what might be the most exotic escapement still available under $50,000. We have a full balance bridge and a free sprung balance for shock tolerance, and you can appreciate these handsome details, though machine finished, are well thought out. We have blackened screws and polished screws, and we have this spiral arabesque Cote de Genève pattern across the bridges, as well as the rotor with engine turning on the base plate. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.